cool. Hey YouTube, it's Devin again, here with Make Anything. And today I'm going to teach you how to make custom supports. So basically when you create a model for 3D printing, you typically export it as an STL file, which is a type of 3D file, and then you put it into a slicer. And that slicer is the software that converts it into something that your printer can use to create a physical object. And these slicers usually have an option to include support material, which calculates structures to deal with overhangs and all that stuff, but it's just a computer algorithm, so it's not nearly as good as a trained human. So anyone who's printed a handful of things on their 3D printer at home has realized how annoying support material can be. Um, you often end up with really ugly underbellies for all your prints. So it's much better to have control over the supports by building them yourself. So I'm going to do that today in SolidWorks and kind of explain the different ways you do it and when you want to do it and why it's awesome. Let's do it. Alright, so I'm going to make a new part in SolidWorks to make some basic shapes to show you how different support materials can be built. So for this first one, I'm going to open up a right plane and create a little bit of a shelf here so that I can basically um, demonstrate what an overhang would do. So I'll just give everything dimensions. Just gonna make it four millimeters here. And I work in millimeters because I end up doing a lot of small things and inches get pretty annoying and you end up having a lot of decimal points. So I'll extrude this from mid-plane. Uh, it's good common practice just so that everything uh, stays centered across the planes and then I'll give this a fillet just to make the shape a little more complicated uh, to show you how the supports work. So there we go, that's the first shape we'll be printing. And so we're also going to make a sphere here uh, to see how the custom supports work with that. So I'll just go ahead and make it a small little 15 millimeter ball uh, and I'll float it somewhere in the air. And then I'm going to draw a center line through it since we're going to be revolving this and just cutting it in half. So that center line will automatically become the point to rotate around. So there we go. A sphere and a little diving board thing. And I can actually move that sphere down a little bit. Um, so that origin point is the build plate basically and I want to give it a little bit of height so that my supports can uh, establish themselves before the actual part starts printing. And you can see if I do a cross section here how exactly uh, the 3D printer would be printing this object from the bottom up. So it's always important to consider how the printer is going to be making the part. So here you can see it's totally fine building up on that diving board but then all of a sudden in a single layer there's going to be this giant overhang and when the printer tries to print that uh, it's going to be printing in midair and that'll just fall over if there's no supports. So the bottom of this little diving board is going to be where the build plate is on the 3D print. So I'm going to go normal to that by hitting control 8 and that'll show me the bottom of this little diving board that's floating. So I'm going to select that face and convert it to have a perfect outline and then I'm going to offset that by 0.5 millimeters and that uh, is based on the nozzle size of my printer. So most standard 3D printers have a 0.4 millimeter nozzle, and so does mine. Um, so I make this line 0.5 so that there's no gaps in the uh, support wall, which could happen if you make the part exactly 0.4 thick all the way around. So I'll make it 0.5, and then I'm also going to trim off this part of the wall that would be touching uh, the side of the model. So I just want to give it enough of a gap so that my support material doesn't fuse to this wall right here. So I'll just give it a millimeter. And there we go, that's the basic support. I just need to extrude that and I'll use extrude offset from surface. So I'll create a 0.2 millimeter gap 
from the actual surface. So as you can see, this new part isn't touching my model at all. But what that'll do is when I'm actually printing it, the printer will try to print the diving board in midair, but uh, the filament will basically be stopped by my support material. And so that'll create a very weak bond that's easy to break off later. And since this is small, the printer could probably bridge across this whole gap, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and show you how I would deal with larger flat surfaces. So what I'll actually do is select the top of my support material, and I'm going to sketch on that. Go normal to again. And then I'll just convert this, so it's a pretty repetitive process. I'm going to close this shape off and delete those inner lines. And what I've got now is basically a flat table underneath my part. So I'll just expand that. Um, I'll make it a millimeter thick going downwards. And that gives the printer enough time to establish this flat thing. So it'll start bridging and it'll be a little messy on the bottom. But by the time it starts printing the actual part that I want to keep, uh, it'll print a lot smoother layers. So when it comes to the sphere, uh, I'll do things a little bit differently. First of all, I want to figure out exactly where I need supports. So the way I do that is by tracing a circle over this. So I'll find the center point and just match the sphere as a circle. And then what I can do is create a tangent line. And that shows me kind of at that point how much, how steep the overhang is. So I'll just create another line from that point going out horizontally and that'll lock horizontal. And then I can dimension this to 45 degrees. So I know that anything below that point is printing steeper than 45 degrees and it's probably a good idea for me to have supports there. So now that I have that point referenced, I can sketch on my bottom again, on the build plate, and I can create a circle. So I'm gonna go just past that reference point I made so that I can fill it in and make it a little easier to remove later on. But I have that circle and I'll just go ahead and extrude it. And like before, I'm gonna use the offset from surface uh, function, make it 0.2 millimeters, and now we have this floating support that's not actually touching the sphere. Oh, and it's always good to color the body so that you know the two materials are separate and you don't accidentally merge parts together. So I'll go ahead and give this a fillet now. It's kind of up to you what you want it to be. I guess 0.4 works pretty well. So this support would actually work just fine right now, but uh, as you can see, there's a bit of material that I don't really need to be printing. You know, it's a little bit excessive for the supports. So to cut down on my print time a little bit, I'm gonna carve out a little bit of this support section. And the way I'm gonna do that for this particular model is by doing a revolved cut. So what I'll do is create that center line to revolve around right from the center of the sphere. And then I'll just make a little bit of a triangle shape that I can cut out. So I'll just make sure this wall is thick enough. So make that a millimeter. So it's kind of just a reference line that I'll delete. And then also I want to make sure this angle is 45 degrees because once again it's a safe, a safe angle for the printer to print at. So now I can trim away my reference and just like that, do a revolved cut, and it'll take out all that extra material. Of course, this is a tiny part, so it's not going to make much of a difference at all, but it's good to know for future reference. So I'm going to go ahead and export this STL, and I'll print out a version with my custom supports here, and then I'll print another version using supports generated by my slicer. So here you can see the two diving boards I made. This is the computer generated supports and here are my supports. So as you can see neither is perfect. Mine has a little weirdness around the edges 
but I kind of prefer that to all these lines on the bottom. As far as the spheres, they came out looking pretty much the same, so I would say that result is inconclusive. But you gotta trust me, on bigger organic shapes, it does work very well. I thought I'd include one more example of a wavier design that slicers often have trouble building supports for. So I'm gonna make something kind of like my diving board, just with some splines right here. These kind of overhangs are the ones where support material can turn out really ugly. So it's a good case for making your own. So now I got a weird elephant trunk. Just like before, we're gonna go ahead and select the plane that represents the build plate and go underneath the overhang. We're gonna create this entity. Um, but in this case, I'm not actually gonna offset the edge. I'm just gonna make a giant block. I'm still gonna create that gap between the part wall and my support so that they don't fuse together. But this time I'm gonna extrude just a solid block and I'm gonna do a blind extrude through my entire model, making sure to deselect merge result so that it remains a separate part. So now I'm gonna select the surface that I wanna support and I'm gonna offset the surface using that offset feature make it 0.2 millimeters again. And then I'm gonna use the split command to consume that top part. And it'll leave me with just the supports again. So this is good if you have multiple faces that the support is holding up uh, because the offset from surface extrude command won't work unless it's only offsetting from one surface. So I'll fill it in again just to make it easier to take off. And to save support material here, I'm actually just gonna use the shell tool and create a one millimeter shell. So that basically does the same job, but by using surfaces as a trim tool, uh, it gives you a little more flexibility with more complex shapes. So once again, I'll print this thing out and see how it does. So here's the wave with computer generated supports and here are the ones that I made custom. Once again, both are far from perfect, but the custom supports come off the model a lot easier and they do come out nicer, so generally it's worth the effort. So that's it for this episode. Uh, I hope you found it useful. You know, supports are one of the biggest frustrations, so being able to take care of that is so satisfying. So I hope you guys put it to use in your future projects. I'll definitely be using custom supports in a lot of future videos of mine, so make sure you subscribe so you can check those out and leave a comment if there's anything else you want to see. Oh no, I lost my marbles.